who is the person for you or people for you that mm-hmm. were inspirations that made you go, you know what, I think I can do this. Yeah, um, definitely Barry Jenkins. And I, I feel disappointed by my answer because he's, you know, he's, um, he's not one of our men. But I think when I saw, when I saw Moonlight um, in 2016, I think that was one of the films that really made me feel like there was a place and a purpose um, for me as a writer and director to tell stories. Um, I, you know, I also went to film school before this, the whole um, clap back on Twitter about the Oscars being so white in 2016. Uh, you know, so white, I was yeah. like, I was pre-2016. So I do remember being in film school and feeling like professors, even classmates thinking why are you here what are you what kind of stories are you gonna tell what story like because none of the films we were looking at reflected that um and I mean I don't want to discredit a lot of the black filmmakers who've you know come before like Spike Lee's work which is amazing but I felt like seeing Barry Jenkins Moonlight in 2016 and realizing that he was making these very tender he made such a tender beautiful film that sort of redefined black masculinity um and I just remember it just felt very contemporary it felt like it was it was you know spot on for what what filmmaking would be like now um and so refreshing and I just I I was like moved to tears and I remember like leaving out theater and thinking like okay I think I think that there's a, like, I think that this is what I want to do. Like, I think I want to tell stories. Um, um, what kind of inspiration do you want to be for future filmmakers coming up behind you? Hmm. You know, that, that's such a, that's such a good question. Um, but I do, I do, I feel like I still grapple with this um, where you know, there's a story that I'm interested in or that I want to tell. And I always have this, this question about whether this is something that anybody wants to see um, or whether audiences would care for the story. I often ask myself, does this feel too personal? Um, and seeing films that are extremely personal um, and even films that have stories that don't don't necessarily you know have mass appeal but somehow they still manage to transcend or to to reach and really connect with people I think that inspires me the most um and so for me it's like when I go forward and continue to make work I hope that I can inspire um filmmakers to really have confidence in their in their own voice and in their personal stories this the Mm -hmm. thing that intrigued me about this film is that it was dealing with it from not only our point of view somebody that looks like us in the lead roles but from a completely different perspective using like dance hall caribbean dance which we we don't even we don't even here in america we don't even know what that is you know what I mean? Like we have remnants of it and have some type of, you know, familiarity with it. But to see how these young women get together and how they bond together and how they do their thing together as a group to try to get these gigs. I've never seen that in film before. I've seen it with white with white kids, but I've never seen it with us. So I want to give you snaps and claps and applaud you on that because this is huge. Thank you. It's Thank huge. Thank you. Yeah, it's really, really huge. Did any of those, that type of film genre, did that inspire you to want to do this type of film? Because like I said, I've never seen it before. Yeah, I mean, I yeah, of course. I think everybody that kind of grew up around the same time would be so influenced by all those dance movies. Um, I do remember going to the theater and, and looking at Step Up and, um, you know, but beyond that, I think one of, uh, a huge inspiration was also something like Dance All Queen, um, which was which was shot in Jamaica. Uh, and I think, yeah, just it's like there's a new level of excitement when you get to see yeah, a dance style that you that you're familiar with and that you're connected to and, and see people dance the way that, 
you know, they did in parties when you, when you, the parties that you went to growing up, you know, and hearing the music that you listened to, um, you know, and I think that was really important to kind of bring it, bring that, that, that dance story into, into a, a world that is somewhat undocumented, you know? I do know. I, I love that. I love that you did that. And I peeped all of that because I, I was like, oh, this is how they dance. And now, child, if I was trying to be a dancer now, I would not make the cut. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely would not make the cut. I was like, oh, my God, the things that they, when they were in the little circle on the street and the one girl was like upside down with her legs going in and out. I'm like, oh, so now you got to be a gymnast to dance. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, that's, that was all. I mean, a lot of those moments weren't even choreographed. That's the thing. Like they, when the music started, they would just get into it so much and go for it. And a lot of those moments where you have them on the street doing like the jump splits and the head stands, none of that was choreographed. That was just, that was all them. That was just them taking control and leading. And, and we were just there to, to capture And let me tell you energy. something. <laughs> those jump splits, every time one of them did it, I was like, ooh, that hurts. That hurts. Ouch, ouch. <laughs> ouch can't do that can't because i can do this <laughs> back in the day i could do the splits but i couldn't do no jump splits i wasn't trying yeah, to do no same. jump splits i'm like yeah i don't know what's gonna happen when i hit that ground and i'm really not trying to find out <laughs> <laughs> yep <laughs> <laughs> what was your no, but they're what, all so great though they were they were the energy the energy was just always great on set yeah. Yeah, it totally, totally was. I kind of love that you put a character in there named Skinny too. I, I kind of just love that <laughs> name, that his name was Skinny. But I love how Skinny kind of he went from being real charming and real cute, you know, because you're mm -hmm. watching and you're like, okay, all right, Skinny, yeah. I see you. <laughs> getting real dark. And you're like, oh, yeah. okay. Skinny yeah. is now who we thought he was. Yeah, he's a deceptive Prince Charming. I mean, I think, you know, in a way we kind of follow the fairy tale model. It's like, uh, you know, a story of this woman kind of, um, you know, find, getting ascending in a way and, and things take off for her and she meets a Prince Charming. But we didn't we didn't want to have a fairy tale ending um, and we wanted to tell a true story and to give um, a taste of what, you know, what actually happens. Um, and so, yeah, see, that character is very, very sort of deceptive um, in, in his introduction. Yeah. I love how you called him a deceptive Prince Charming. I love that. <laughs> I like I kind of like that title. I also love how it was it was a little bit of a coming of age story for Sparkle, because when mm -hmm. we first see her, she looks like a little girl. And by the mm -hmm. time the film ends, you know, she has no makeup on. Her hair is pulled back. She got her little backpack. She got her little, you know little school clothes on and by the time it ends her face is beat <laughs> for the gods <laughs> that hair is, is twisted up in a little knot on her head you know you can tell that this whole experience with these young girls has changed her and made her grow up in a way that she didn't see coming how important do you think it is to give that message to young girls with this film yeah I mean you know beyond the materialistic sort of uh, progression and transformation that she has you know I think it was really important that she walks away with a, a newfound autonomy where she can stand on her own two feet and not have to sort of rely on papa or even the sisterhood but she can sort of find strength within herself and move out in the world making her own decisions and um, standing on her own two feet and of course this sort of material um and the makeup and the clothes it's just all like a fun uh addition to all of that but I think it was really important that she felt that change within 